I'm Gemma and welcome back to Nonfic Books and we have my second in the Nonfiction November series and that is Fiona Reynolds' The Fight for Beauty, Our Path to a Better Future. Originally I chose this as my controversial choice, oh hello dog, um, but now that I've read it I'm moving it over to my important choice because I think that this is a book that everyone should read. It's about conservation and it is UK centric but I think the principles underlying this would be applicable across the board. This was published in 2016 by One World Publications and is 317 pages long. Fiona Reynolds has been working in the conservation industry for 20 to 30 years now and is currently um, master Master of Emmanuel College in Cambridge. She's been the Director General of the National Trust and worked on a large number of conservation boards and has advised the government on con the way to move forwards as well. This is a fabulous book. At first I was a little bit worried because she starts talking about some of the problems that has, have arisen and I was a little bit worried she'd be one of these conservationists who are totally idealistic and forget that we actually have to live in a modern world and a modern way but then she brings things back and has practical suggestions about ways that we can move forwards in a practical sustainable manner for the future and obviously as the title suggests the big focus here is beauty and how we really shouldn't be scared to use such a subjective and emotive term because that is what people really get fired up by. You start using a lot of different sort of very technical terms in all these papers, you're not going to grab people as much. We all know beauty when we see it, we know beautiful scenery, we get moved by it, um, beautiful landscapes, beautiful cities in comparison to horrible ones, it's very very clear and not everyone agrees 100% but overwhelmingly people have a general consensus and how important it is to use beauty to really get people involved with nature and respecting how much it, we actually do need to start making a difference because we're totally destroying the world and doing very little to protect our own futures and the planet. This book, I had to actually stop myself, I never tab books and so the fact that this has got what six tabs in, I never tab books. So that's how many amazing things that I thought she had to say and I really had to stop myself from sort of tabbing even more because it just gets a bit crazy after a while. I thought I would read the summing up paragraph or two because I think that sort of explains her attitude better than anything else. And it's because ultimately this message of the book is one of hope. The human spirit needs beauty and can't live without it. And we will all strive for more beauty in our lives if given the chance. The economy on its own, meanwhile, will not save the planet from the irreversible damage and will not make us happy. We learn from the past, but our responsibility is to the future. And we should allow beauty to help us find the ideas and actions that will enable us to plan with greater confidence for it. As David Attenborough once said, People will only protect what they care about, and they will only care about what they have experienced. We should sow the seeds of those experiences, so future generations will know and love the beauty we need to enrich our lives and nurture our souls, now and for forever. I loved this book, uh, as you may have guessed, and I really recommend that anyone, whether you're interested in conservation or you just want to learn more about it, this is a great place to start. She starts off with a sort of summary of um, the idea of beauty and the landscape. She then goes into the his history of the national parks in the UK, the National Trust. She looks at um, the way landscapes have been conserved, then wildlife, then heritage and then cities. And then has a summing up chapter at the end with a little look in between of the benefits and problems that have arisen through farming and through timber production and woodland planting which sounds like a good thing but has been done in quite damaging ways historically. I thought this was absolutely fantastic, her writing is engaging, she is obviously incredibly passionate 
and the thing that I liked was this practical streak that ran through it which stopped it from being far too wishy-washy and sort of idealistic which I find some conservation books can become. So I really enjoyed this and definitely think it deserves an, the place of important in the books that I'm reading this month and I highly recommend that any or all of you go and pick this book up. So I'd love to know, what did you read for the important challenge or are you reading anything for it? If so, leave it down below and if you have any questions and comments on this, please leave them down below as well and I will see you in a video soon. Bye!